Hey guys, so we have a really bright, sunny day today. The girls are done with school. I'm gonna see if I can get this garden bed put together. Um, if, if you don't have really cold weather, if you have a long growing season, you really don't need those tall beds. And um, so we're gonna show a short bed. The reason I'm doing it this way is because you don't see a lot of weeds now, but this area gets warm enough that the weeds that are here are pernicious and aggressive and there's a lot of vines and a lot of grass here that I don't want to have to mess with so I'm going to put down cardboard we're going to add some planting medium and I need to make sure that the cardboard overlaps and extends beyond the bed so that we don't have anything encroaching in especially the vines and I also need to get this box of comfrey planted from Marsh Creek Farmstead um, they are really wishing to be outside and really to put some roots down and get started, so. I honestly think that the easiest thing to do with this kind of situation where you know it's going to be temporary is to just go with shabby chic. Make sure that the materials are sturdy enough to hold the, pl the planting medium. Make sure that you have a weed barrier down and then spend the most money on good soil. Um, it's going to look a little rough, but I think when I have things planted into it and they're really going, you won't even be able to see the bed. So I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in some carbon because we want to give <clears throat> a little more bulk to the bed than what we're just gonna get from planting medium. And then I'm gonna put some rabbit manure over the top. <laughs> came to my meet and greet here in Oklahoma so thank you so much for the manure it is a treasure um, for any of you who are southern I will be having two more meet and greets early this year one is March 10th in Stone County Mississippi go to uh, Deep South Homestead on Facebook to their events page and we will be there for that and then in May we will be there the first weekend the first Sunday of May with um, Doug and Stacy at the Baker's Creek um, Seed Celebration in Missouri. So, those are our next two meet and greets. You're welcome to bring me manure. <laughs> Thank you. 
So what you're gonna say is, Julie, that all that manure, all that urine is going to burn the roots of your plants and you're gonna have raw manure next to vegetables. What are you thinking? So this system that I use is heavy in carbon. And the time it takes for those tiny little roots to get through the planting soil and down to the carbon and then down to the manure, it will have broken down. It happens every single time, but you have to have a lot of carbon there with your manure. Um, the other thing is, is that what I'm planting here is a comfrey bed and it actually is gonna turn back around and feed the rabbits and the chickens and the ducks. So, Marsh Creek Farmstead is where I got these lovely little, these are some of the babies. See that? See how they're already sprouting up? These are some of the babies. The big, huge honcho I haven't planted yet. Um, but I cannot plant them directly into mulch and manure. I have to have something on the top to, um, that isn't going to either rob nitrogen for, from them or kill them with nitrogen. So we need a planting medium and I use um, peat moss and perlite, a lot of perlite, more than you'd think, so that you can still, because peat moss will close off um, and so the perlite will open up pores for water to get in. And this is the first time I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna add some humus and compost in and Michael R said I needed to add sand, but I haven't been able to find any sand that didn't have toxins in it um, because it was used as a, um, as a sandbag, like for uh, flood uh, protection. And um, I just haven't made it into Home Depot to get sand. So I wish I was adding sand, but I'm gonna do the best with what I have and we'll see how it goes. Okay, perlite and peat moss are both very dusty. They're not over the top expensive, but they're still expensive. You don't want to waste them and you don't want to blow away the wind. So as I do this, I am going to keep them a little bit damp so they're not blowing away. So the reason I use perlite and um, peat moss is because I can get it in big bales at the garden store for a relatively small amount of money. It's not real heavy. I can move it around myself and it's not as expensive as buying individual bags of potting soil. Um, if you don't have a pickup truck to be able to go and just get a couple yards of um, good topsoil, garden soil to bring in, it's a good alternative. Um, when I was building my other beds, I just didn't have the money to go buy topsoil. I didn't have a truck that could go get it. And so um, this is a good alternative, especially if you're using rabbit manure and other things underneath it that will add body and life to it. it has the, the other things in here, like the mulch will help with aeration. And as it breaks down, it'll add carbon and the rabbit mulch will counter that with nitrogen and it will add good bacteria into your soil so it isn't sterile. So um, it is kind of difficult to start seeds 
in this mixture though. It's much better to bring in transplants, make sure your soil's nice and rich. I tried to find my trifecta and I can't find it. Uh, that is the fertilizer that I get from MI Gardener. The garden seeds that I all start that I started from scratch are also from MI Gardener. I have them in the link below, 10% off discount, and they're only 99 cents a per seed packet, so they're a good deal. Um, I'm happy with their germination rate. They've done really well for me, and uh, they are my affiliate, so I do make a little bit of money off of them, which is also very nice. Um, so this is a very rough bed for temporary situations, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's helpful. And now what I need to do is find a way to cover it so I don't have cats in here pooping. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. So this lovely white cloth is called Remate and I got it from Territorial Seeds. And that was my go-to amazing seed company uh, for most of my gardening experience because they had really good germination. They're a little bit pricier, but they do have some good, good seeds and um, you can get them in bulk. So if you're going for a prepper, food storage, uh, seed collection, they're fantastic. And um, I got my greenhouse plastic and my Remake cloth from them and I highly recommend them as well. So this will give a little bit of filtered sunlight to that comfrey so that the sun isn't burning them. It's supposed to be hot tomorrow so that it acts as like a quasi frost cloth, shade cloth, bug um, and cat um, excluder. So I really like it. I'm happy to have this out here and I will not be planting any tiny seeds like carrots in here at this point. I will probably be putting in some pea seeds and um, other large seeds that really can handle a little bit of cold still and are big enough that they can make their way up through that kind of stubborn um, peat moss. Part of the problem is that it just fo it forms a crust and so you've really got to have some really tenacious seeds to get through it unless you're going to be putting in something that already has a root system established like these comfrey do. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that and we'll talk to you later.